story now i don't know if the mainstream fake media because they are fake and phony but i just don't know if they're going to pick it up but i want to tell you that is a big story what she's saying it's illegal number one and it's really very unfair to bernie sanders i'm not a bernie sanders fan although i must say i got a lot of his votes when he was thrown out many of those people voted for me because of trade because i agreed with him in trade we're just doing more about it than he can do and we're doing a lot about it but that was i thought that was terrible Roger Stone, former head of the Trump campaign, Trump confidant, uh, is here with us. And boy, everything you've said about the campaign and what happened after your advice to the president has been dead on. But as we've said, the president's got his own brain. It's when our analysis, your analysis, clicks with his, that's when he tends to really go with something, when we confirm his own research, his own gut understanding. And the more he goes with his gut, the more victories we have. Roger, what do you call this historically as... Donna Brazil comes out confirming everything about them stealing the election criminally and the money from Sanders, all confirmed in triplicate, what you and I and others broke down with our moles and our information. We have all the articles to prove it and are on record, as everybody knows, attacked by the media for ever saying it. Um, now you've got Pocahontas, Elizabeth Warren coming out saying it was wrong. Uh, you've, got, you've got CNN reporters, people that pose as reporters like Wolf Blitzer, uh, you've got basically everybody throwing the Clintons under the bus. Something months ago we said there's an internal battle. It's about to break. The Clintons are trying to hold on. They're extincting the party. So as much as I hate them and want to see them gone, now I love seeing her ugly face and Bill Clinton's ugly face because it is like kryptonite to these people. Just It is bringing the republic back. It is beautiful. It is amazing. They just uh, You never want to interrupt your enemy when they're destroying themselves, as Sung Su said. What would you call this time, my friend? Uh, this is fratricide is what this is. I mean, first of all, the president's absolutely right. So you had three out of 10 Bernie Sanders supporters voting for Trump. Uh, let's remember it was WikiLeaks and Julian Assange who first uh, revealed the documents that showed that the Democratic National Committee was cheating under the leadership of Deborah Wasserman Schultz were bending the rules. You know who won the California primary between Bernie and Hillary Clinton? No, either do I. You know why? They haven't finished counting yet. You know why? Because Bernie won. That's why. And we have to, we have, we can't. Well, they, 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 was in, they had a meeting the night before at a billionaire's house and, quote, they decided it was Hillary before they had the election. Yeah, it's extraordinary. I mean, I mean, that's what's crazy about this. It's like the brazenness. Every single professional Democrat I know, and I have many friends who are Democrats, they just want the Clintons to go away. They are Poison. They are destroying the Democratic brand, or at least what is left of it. So you heard my point about bittersweet. I kind of hope the Clintons hang around, actually. Well, look, I think she's serious about running in 2020. Now, I predicted last night on the war room, uh, and I will stick to my prediction. Michelle Obama will be a Democratic candidate for president, and she is the presumptive nominee. She's certainly the front runner if she wants to be. Barack Obama, not the Clintons, control the machinery of that party if they seek to uh, assert themselves. And the Obama brand, uh, as much as I disagree with it, does not have the baggage that the Clinton brand has. It's the end of the road for Hillary. Everybody seems to know it but her. This is huge, but let me just, since you're into fashion uh, and, and, and well-known for that in the, in the New York circles, can we go to that camera shot of Roger Stone, please, real, just real fast? I've not tried to look better than CNN or Fox News. We've built a, a studio here, you know, for a fraction of the cost. But I've got to say, that shot with the American flag stars, with the InfoWars logo and your suit, is the best TV shot, uh, better than Nightline, anything I've ever seen, uh, we have achieved, uh, I, I mean, I got to say good job, crew. Wow, look at that shot, Roger. And here's the thing, uh, Alex, unlike Paul Manafort, I did not spend $1.3 million on my wardrobe in one year. I did not go to one haberdasher and spend a half million dollars. Now, since I believe Manafort's money was clean, and I think he earned it perfectly legally, he's entitled to spend it any way he wants. You notice in the phony indictment rolled out against him. They talk about how he evaded taxes, but they brought no charge of tax evasion. And you first broke the fact that they obsessed over his suits. That was an inside thing he told you. Hours photographing him at his house. Exactly. So when they broke into his apartment at five o'clock after they patted he and his wife down to see if they were uh, carrying guns, they actually they actually patted his wife down before they let her get out of bed. Outrageous. 
uh, they went into his closet and they took photographs of his extensive wardrobe of, of uh, custom-made Italian suits. Now, I, you know, I would not spend that kind of money on clothing, to be honest with you. I believe in buying quality. But they, but they want to put that out as a class warfare thing. Yeah, no, they want, they, it's the politics of resentment. They want people to resent the fact that Paul Manfort has been successful, and he's earned everything he has. And they want people to think, oh, it must be ill-gotten, but then compared to the Clinton Foundation, openly criminal, all the Uranium One coming out, the Podesta brother resigning, uh, uh, President Trump saying, go after John Podesta, what does that signify for us uh, if we read the tea leaves? What is the president telegraphing? Well, look, I, I think that they've got a very, very weak indictment. I, I'm glad to see Tony Podesta now finally in the crosshairs. Um, there's rumors of two sealed indictments, but for all we know, they're going to indict Paul Manfort's driver for double parking, and they're going to nail his housekeeper for tearing the tags off of the cushions on his sofa. I mean, this is really reaching absurd proportions. And they admit in the indictment that, that the you know, junior guy that's pled guilty kept saying, do this with the Russians, and always got rebuffed. Right. And then it turns out he's connected to, to the Democrats. And, and he's nobody. He had no authority. He had no security clearance. For so it'd be like, uh, I've got 70-something people here in this office. It'd be like if I hired somebody as a junior editor, they'd been here a month, and then I'm indicted because the person gets caught selling marijuana on the other side of town? No, it's not analogous, because you use the key words, hired. This guy wasn't hired by anyone. He was a volunteer. He had no official authority. He wasn't on the payroll. He didn't have a, a security clearance or even a pass to get into that. And that's court. all they've got. Right, and that's all they have. That That's what they tie so, in. So, so let's pull back. The pedophilia of Hollywood's coming out. The whole thing's collapsing. The NFL is down 30-something percent just this year. What's well, 18%. Everything's imploding. It's like they're rolling, you know, uh, snake eyes every time. We're rolling double sixes every time. I mean, I'm not trying to be over positive here. This is getting spectacular. I don't want to get too confident, though. Well, I, I'm perplexed today by the decision announced by uh, Attorney General Jeff Sessions to recuse himself in the matter of Uranium One. Really? This is extraordinary. The president. Oh, yeah. What does that mean? I, I don't understand where his conflict comes from. I mean, there's no connection to Trump and Uranium One. It's all Hillary and Podesta. Exactly. What is he doing? Yeah, he has nothing to do. How about he recuses himself of being the attorney general? How about he resign or be fired? This is reaching absurd proportions. If Jeff In fact, I'm going to put the headline out now. Jeff Sessions has recused himself as being attorney general. Jeff Sessions is not. Jeff Sessions has fired himself. Jeff Sessions is titular. He's ceremonial. Go, go, go. But here's what's even odder, and that is the tweet by the president this morning in which he says he's not supposed to direct the actions or affect the actions of the Justice Department. What lame-ass lawyer gave him that information? That's incorrect. In fact, he said, I'm not involved with the Justice Department, but I think they ought to do something. Well, they're trying to tell him, sir, that's obstruction. No, that's in your executive branch, Jack. He, what, what he needs to do is to order Jeff Sessions, order him to appoint a special counselor, a special prosecutor, even though, by the way, we have no special And by the way, let's be clear. The, the president matter. can't appoint one, even though he can under the Constitution. But then the Rosenstein, the deputy AG, he can. Right. And then the swamp thing, Mueller climbs out. Yeah. So I, I have nominees for a special counselor on uh, on Uranium One. Uh, I'd be more than happy with Andrew McCarthy or Judge Andrew Napolitano uh, or, or even Trey Gowdy. We need a real lawyer, somebody committed to the rule of law to dig into Uranium One. But they always thought they were going to get away with it. There's not even digging into it. Well, it, it's there on the surface. Comey, Mueller, McCabe, Rosenstein. Guilty. Busted. Where is Jeff Sessions? What is the verdict? Guilty. 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 We shall return on the other side. I'm Alex Jones, Roger Stone, and more. Tons of other breaking news on the other side. Have you spread the link to the show yet? It's an act of rebellion, and Soros hates it. By the way, Alex Jones here back live with Roger Stone. He'll be hosting the fourth hour. Then after that, Owen Schroer in the War Room's coming up. Also that he uh, co-hosts that day and night, weekday mornings, kicks off at 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. And that is the real news with David Knight. And I get so busy in the here and now that I haven't really plugged today. I should have been tomorrow at 1 o'clock. We may go a little bit earlier depending on events, but 1 o'clock to about 8 o'clock. Uh, that's when Antifa communists is what they are. It's run by the American Communist Party on their own website, buying full-page ads with Soros money in the New York Times. They say they're launching these massive attacks 
Uh, and so we're going to be covering it. And then the media comes out and says, we're lying. It's not happening. Saying that this, this, the, 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 these ads aren't real. So they don't want us to know what's going on. I guess they can launch their attacks and then spin it. But briefly, Roger came in here. He's been working so hard. He said, man, I'm t tired. Do you have any brain forks? This was a real plug. And uh, he already, he already took his brain force uh, earlier, but I'm taking my brain force and my DNA force right now because my wife's birthday party last night, though I was a good boy, I did not imbibe. I did end up staying up late and did a big workout this morning. And usually by the last hour of the show, the fatigue hits me. But with Brain Force Plus back in stock at InfoWarsStore.com, I am doing well. And we also have DNA Force sold out for almost four months. It's 25% off DNA Force. Amazing. We're detoxifying your cells, helping your telomeres uh, not be assaulted by all the toxins and thus last longer, more healthy cell division. That's always a good thing. Hundreds of studies. You can read links to them at InfoWarsLive.com and learn about DNA Force. Also, Biome Defense Probiotic back in stock, highest quality, 25% off. Again, InfoWarsLive.com or 888 Two five three three one three nine, and please commit to support us. We know you support us. You're awesome. I'm not beating you over the head saying, "Hey, you better." But the globalists are attacking us for a reason. We are the tip of the spear. We're bold. We have the bold guests and researchers on. You're getting today's news a year ago, a year and a half ago. On just every day, you see examples. It's sickening. That's why they ran in hundreds of papers yesterday uh, uh, lies that Owen Schroyer said that Hitler was still alive. And the government was lying. They just cut that out. He said, oh, according to 1955 documents in the JFK data dump. And then we had guest on, the host of Hunting Hitler, and he said, no, that's probably fake or a Hitler double because they were getting ready for Hitler to run there in case he wanted to and were moving into Argentina. But he thinks a lot of it's classified. He can't get into it. He's involved in all sorts of classified stuff. He's just not your average Green Beret. Uh, that these actually did die in Germany. I, I was sitting there when Owen said this. He never said Hitler was still alive. All he pointed out was that this document existed. So this is typical fake news by David Brock and the twisted freaks at Media Matters for America. These people are incapable of telling the truth, incapable of it. And, and, and they're doing it every day. Like they say again, that I say that there are human slave colonies on Mars. I never said that. It's a total lie. Here's the problem. They can't get any traction on Twitter, on Facebook. Nobody's reading their crap. So they have to malign us just by mentioning InfoWars, the only way they can get any traction whatsoever. It, it is mind-blowing, though, when they have Newsweek say that I made it up and that there's no full-page ad in the New York Times last Wednesday. This is on Wednesday night. They said, I'm a liar in Newsweek and a bunch of other publications. I mean, Roger, here it is. It's all over the country. The, the link, they have it on their own website. It's there. The New York Times has it online on their site. What is that? Well, it, it, in all, and you've been... You're a political it. operative. What, what, is, what are they doing that for? Uh, I mean, that discredits them. It, it's either sloppy uh, or, or it's uneducated or it's willful fake news. There's only a couple possibilities. But well, we know it's willful fake news. Why lie when it's so obvious? Like saying the sky is not blue and Donald Trump is a black man. I mean, it's not true. Well, now you know why Newsweek is on, is on the, uh, you know. 50% of their people just cut. Yeah, no, and they're losing money hand over fist. They're hanging on by a thread. Um, they're not thriving because unlike we here at InfoWars, they're not saying, they're not telling the truth. They're not publishing the cutting edge facts. They're just uh, an apologist for the two party duopoly and the, and the failing political establishment that's, uh, that's run this country into the gut. What would you call this point that you have all the, I mean, all the top Democrats coming out now and like stabbing Caesar? They're all coming out and saying Hillary's bad, Hillary's corrupt, Hillary's evil, Hillary committed crimes, uranium won, stole the election from Bernie. And, and, and then Warren goes, we've destroyed the party, we've got to, we, we've got to say we were wrong. A, a, a day late and a trillion dollars short, lady. Uh, but I think the left has figured out that if they cannot get rid of the Clintons, their chances for revival are zero. The, the, the professional left has figured out that the Clintons are not liberals, they're not progressives, they're not moderates. They're crony capitalists. They're thieves. They would steal a hot stove. They're interested only in themselves and lining their own pockets. They're OGs. They're original gangsters. Right. And the, the, even the left has figured out we must get rid of these people to have any chance of political success. So and you see Donna Brazil, who I know and actually kind of like, uh, I know on a personal level, even though our politics are completely deaf, she's come forward and said, enough, enough of these people.
So, uh, it, and, 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 and not, just out of self survival of a party. It's, it's desire. It's desire for political success. That's what political parties do. And they realize they cannot be successful as long as Hillary Clinton or her husband is the face of the Democrat. And notice party. they tried to sell InfoWars as the face of Trump, thinking they could control the narrative. Trump embraced it. It blew up in their face. And now this hardcore form of nationalist libertarianism, Americana, has literally taken the party over. I mean, we're not bragging when we say it. We are taking you, the audience. We uh, It's just devastating. They made every miscalculation. It's come out WikiLeaks. They thought Trump was weak. So the Democrats mainly focused on him and gave him all the attention and ordered the networks to follow him, thinking it would help Hillary. Even though top advisors said, no, he'll beat you, they were so arrogant. They thought because he was radical and off the rails that people would reject him in the general election. That's what they're looking for. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I remember uh, that I read, once read a biography of Hamilton Jordan, who had been Jimmy Carter's chief of staff, and he wrote in the book, we desperately want to run against Ronald Reagan. We can crush him. He's a simpleton. He's a moron. We'll destroy him. Of course, he was the one candidate who could beat Carter. It's exactly the same. The and by the way, you said this almost two years ago in here. Yes, the Clintons wanted Donald Trump. They thought that they could beat him because he was... he was. Uh, Why are they so stupid? Because they don't understand the American culture. They don't understand the American people. It was born uh, of, of arrogance, and they got what they asked for. I'm convinced that no other Republican candidate of the 16 who ran could have beaten the Clinton machine. They nominated the one man who was able to beat Hillary Clinton. And then he was able, because of his positions on both war and trade, to move in on those Bernie voters. Three. Out he was the only man that could do it. Exactly right. And then there was Infowars and Drudge with the with the background, everything ready. It was just all it was like. It was it was a hole in one. It was a it was shot out of a million. If you go to my book, The Making of the President 2016, I, I detail in there about how Hillary Clinton attacked Alex Jones and Infowars by name. I was so jealous at the time, so jealous. But now that she's attacked me in her new fictional book, What Happened, three times by name. Thank you, Hillary. Uh, I, I guess the score is even, Alex. They never understood. Isn't it good to have me blamed by this witch? Well, it's not blame. It's credit in a sense. But the credit belongs to Donald Trump. He's the guy who... Oh, absolutely. And it's not about tooting our horn. It's so the audience gets, we are the vanguard. When I tell the audience, they're the reason we're here, supporting us, spreading the word, putting up with me. It's because it's you. You are the info war, folks. This is real. But we understand... All over the world. Talk about the global thing. They, it, it, we understand it's politically uh, uh, incorrect. It's, it's socially unacceptable to be for Donald Trump. We are proudly unabashedly Trumpsters here at InfoWars. And we should. Look at the stock market. Look at the new jobs. Look at the new factory startups. It's better than Reagan even did. It is. It is. Uh, and, and a lot of leftists are finally going, okay, with this Donna Brazil thing was like the dam breaking. I'm seeing everybody go, okay, you're right. I'm glad Trump got in. She would have started a war. I don't know what's wrong with me. They're finally getting that they got sucked into a con. There's no question about it. And, and it, it's going to be interesting to see the way the chickens come home to roost in the district of Deborah Wasserman Schultz, where many, many progressives upset now that she's completely exposed as having stolen the nomination from Bernie Sanders. Hey, don't you love this uh, cartoon? It's of trick-or-treating, and there's a Batman, and there's a Snow White, and there's a little kid playing Hillary. And uh, they go on to point out that uh, one of the little kids won't go away. The one dressed like Hillary refuses to go away, and the lady says, yeah, nice, nice touch. I mean, everybody gets it. That interview, which I think you aired yesterday, um, or I guess Owen Shore aired it, of Hillary, where she blames Trump, right, for pointing out that it wasn't a truck that, that that hit those people in Times Square. It was an Islamic terrorist. Oh my God, he's dividing us, dividing us. What by telling the truth? Now telling the truth is divisive, despicable, just despicable. But the media, the the, the Democrats have finally turned against her out of self-preservation. The media still worships her. I mean, doesn't a Trevor Noah or any of those guys know? There's nothing more uncool than having the witch. Of, of hell on your show. I, I, I frankly hope she keeps running her mouth. Frankly, she's destroying any chance they have. Of, as Should as we as start as a committee for, to, the, to run Hillary again? Yeah, Hillary 2020. Let's announce it. Let's start at the fund. We are for Hillary. Hillary 2020. She can do it.
I'm with her. Hillary yeah, 2020. Her. Definitely with her. Run yeah. again. I'm with her. We love Hillary. We love Hillary. We love Hillary. 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 She's our... Uh, Roger Stone coming up in the next segment after a Paul Joseph Watson report is going to be taking over. And then Owen Schroyer in the war room after that, 3 o'clock Central. Tomorrow, I'm going to be in here live. 1 p.m. to 8 p.m. at least, probably earlier if all hell broke loose. But the communists say they launched their attack at about 1 central, uh, according to all their websites. They say the main attack, shooting police, bombing things, beating people's brains out, will start then. They have New York Times ads saying rise up, overthrow Trump. So we'll be covering that. But, you know, seriously, I'm sick of Hillary. I'm sick of uh Bill Clinton, all of them. But if they're destroying the corrupt, evil Democratic Party and, 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 and not giving the rhinos cover uh, anymore, then I want to see this whole political system burn down to the ground. And I want to destroy the republic. So we really should get behind Hillary 2020. I'm with her, an exploratory committee. And I actually think about raising money for her and just being her biggest booster. Uh, but almost I don't want to, Ken, because that maybe they'll figure out that really she is cyanide to their party. But I, I think they've already figured it out. But she may win the Civil War up there with Pelosi and the rest of them and, and the other sea hags that they've got in charge of the party. No, I think you're right, Alex. I think we need to draft Hillary Clinton 2020. Look, uh, clearly they've looked at their bank account and they've decided we haven't stolen enough. We need the opportunity to steal some more. Maybe even Chelsea can steal more than she's already stolen. Uh, and therefore, she wants to go in 2020. God bless her. Please grab the nomination. In fact, I'm going to announce right now, my book, The Clinton's War on Women, will be out in the new edition if she runs. We'll get all the new corruption, the new lies about Russian interference in the election. You know, the mainstream media was right, Alex. There was a candidate nominated by one of the two major parties in bed with Vladimir Putin. There was a presidential candidate whose top aides were making millions off of uh, the oligarchs around Putin. Unfortunately for them, that candidate was Hillary Clinton. Oh, and by the way, just saying, who said six months ago there's a brewing civil war in the Democratic Party? Who said it two weeks ago and then the last week and Drudge picked it up? Now, let's put it back up. It's in the New Yorker magazine today and yesterday. The Democratic civil war is getting nasty even if no one is paying attention. Isn't that cute? We're again 100% insanely dead on. No, I remember when you had a uh, an interview I think was conducted by Richard Reeves with a superdelegate who actually told our cameras... Oh, it doesn't matter whether uh, whether Bernie gets more votes. It doesn't matter whether he gets to the convention with a higher vote total than Hillary Clinton. She's going to be nominated. It, it's preordained. That was a stunning piece of television journalism. You know, since you mentioned it, we're going to come back with Paul's report. Then we'll play that. That'll give you about six, seven, eight minutes to get everything ready. I know you want to go get your notes. Uh, so that's going to happen after the break. Uh, in other news... What else are we watching, though? Because Mueller's still moving forward, even though he's been caught being a Russian bagman, literally. That's why he's so desperate to pin it on Trump. Uh, how's the swamp doing? I know it's launching chemical uh, chemical attacks on us. We're not going to get into yet. Uh, but but how should we watch our six? How should we not be too confident? Well, I, I'm going to examine yet again uh, this decision by Jeff Sessions to recuse himself on the most important issue out there right now, which is Uranium One. I just don't understand what's wrong with this man. There is no conflict there. He's not involved in any way in Uranium One. Uh, and why he will not do the job that is constitutionally required of him, I don't understand. He's got to go. He really, he really does. He's too concerned with busting people for smoking legal marijuana in the 29 states where the people have legalized it, grabbing people's assets uh, when they haven't been convicted of any crimes, I mean, I was talking to Judge Andrew Napolitano about this about a week ago, and even he has sadly concluded it's time for Jeff Sessions to pack it in and go. Well, Jeff Sessions is already recusing himself from being the attorney general. In essence, absolutely. And of course, they argue, well, he met three times, you know, a couple of years before. Well, that's what senators of his level do with the Russian ambassador. Nothing, nothing improper or illegal about that. I mean, Pelosi met 30 times. He met three times. It's just crazy. All right, Roger Stone, straight ahead. Please spread the word about the broadcast. You're the reason we reach people and get through the big uh, censor systems of Google and others. Email our articles, the videos, spread the links. This is how we win. I salute you all. We'll be back. Stay with us. We're here at the Red Arrow Diner, and we've gone further down the bar here, and we found this gentleman. What's your name? Bob Mulholland from Chico, California. I'm a DNC member, thus a superdelegate to the National Convention. Wow, so that's the first time I can think of that I've talked with a Democratic superdelegate. Tell us 
How long have you been a superdelegate? How long have you been a delegate? And tell us a little bit more about the process of how you get to be a superdelegate. There's several ways, but I, this will be my 11th national convention. I've been a superdelegate since 1992. In our case, in California, you have to get elected by the California Democratic Party to be on the DNC. Obviously, Democratic governors are automatic superdelegates. So, understandably, that it sounds like Hillary is going to have a huge edge when it comes to superdelegates. Is that correct? Oh, yeah. And, and, and former DNC chairs like Howard Dean, who's from Vermont, he's known Bernie for decades, he's for Hillary. Yeah, the people who have worked with Hillary for decades are big supporters of her. If they haven't said so yet, they're gonna, they're, they will over the next several weeks. So roughly, when it comes to the Democratic National Convention, what is the rough total of delegates that are going to be available for the DNC? <laughs> um, right now, about 4,800. So you need about uh, almost 2,400 to get the nomination. And the way we work is that uh, anybody who gets 15% more in election gets delegates. So this election will go all the way to California. Sanders will end up with well over 1,000 delegates, and Hillary will get the nomination. Okay, uh, now the superdelegates are basically what Hillary pretty much already has in her pocket. How many, how many delegates well, is that amount? 750 delegates. My guess is she probably has half of them committed to her. But she's out there working the um, uh, precincts and working the states every day for every vote. And uh, March 1st is Super Tuesday. At the end of the day, you will see that Hillary has the most delegates of regular people from caucuses like Iowa, from New Hampshire primaries, uh, Nevada, South Carolina, and then all those states on March 1st. I'm Roger Stone sitting in for Alex Jones, uh, and we're, you're at the Alex Jones Show. I'll be right back. In the meantime, don't change your settings. Stay tuned to the Alex Jones Show. We've got lots coming up. We are uh, going to go through the president's tweets and analyze those. We're going to talk about blasphemy in the city of Philadelphia, where they're talking about removing the statue of Mayor Frank Rizzo. There you have it, the man of the hour, very much in the news, Senator Bernie Sanders. Thank you, Senator. We're going to be taking your calls today. You can call at 877-789-ALEX. That's 877-789-ALEX. I'm going to be proud to take your calls here on the Alex Jones Show. Frank Rizzo was a beat cop, and then he was the police commissioner, and then the two-term mayor of Philadelphia, tough on crime in the 1970s. Frank Rizzo was on his way to an unprecedented third term as mayor, a comeback, this time as a Republican, when he was struck down by a massive heart attack. Now, there is talk about removing the statue of Big Frank Rizzo, known as the Bambino, sometimes called the Cisco Kid, from in front of the municipal building in Philadelphia. Now, Frank Rizzo was neither a slaveholder, nor was he a traitor. In fact, he was a great American, sometimes called President Richard Nixon's favorite mayor, uh, he crossed over to endorse Richard Nixon in the 1972 campaign against Senator George McGovern. Now, the city fathers in Philadelphia say that they're looking for alternate locations for Frank Rizzo's statue, but they won't mention where those alternative locations are. My guess is they are nowhere and that the statue of Frank Rizzo is going to be removed in this hell-bent for leather dive towards political correctness. I'm particularly interested in the comments of CNN commentator Mike Smirkanish. Smirkanish is a brilliant legal analyst, uh, one of the better commentators there at CNN, but he also is a former aide and protege of Frank Rizzo. So, Mike Smirkanish, I'll be looking for your comments on this travesty. Again, we're going to be taking your calls at uh, 877-789-ALEX. That's 877-789-ALEX. 
I've been keeping a close eye on the Twitter feed of Donald Trump. Now, you can't follow me on Twitter anymore because just before the indictment of Paul Manafort and his longtime deputy, Rick Gates, and some fellow named Papadopoulos, who I have never heard of and who was a mere volunteer on the Trump campaign, I was unceremoniously banned for life by Twitter. This is a bit strange because, you see, that's not what they told me. When I would go to my Twitter feed, I was told that I was banned for three hours and 22 minutes. 322, the numbers of skull and bones. How convenient. Well, I waited and watched it click down and click down and click down until it was one minute before my suspension was to end. And then it all went black. Now, if you want to keep track of my exploits and what I'm up to, um, my supporters have put up uh, something called Stone Cold Truth, at Stone Cold Truth. Go there now and you can keep track of what I'm doing. I don't control that feed, but it does accurately reflect what I'm doing here at InfoWars. You, of course, can also go to the InfoWars feed to see what Roger Stone is up to. Because you see, folks... I won't be silenced. When I was in Washington Tuesday, I met with some of the top telecommunications lawyers in the country who believe I have an extraordinarily strong case on both First Amendment and antitrust grounds, as well as others. And therefore, I was heartened when I've been contacted by a number of multinational corporations, names you would recognize in the communications business, more than willing to financially underwrite a lawsuit against Twitter. And perhaps we shall have one. Stay tuned, the fight over Roger Stone's Twitter feed is not over. Yesterday, you can see a tweet from my wife who asks the obvious question. Why is Roger Stone banned when the people who threaten to kill our family, our children, even our dogs, well, they're still up on Twitter? Good question, indeed. Uh, let us uh, then go to uh, the phones, uh, which uh, we uh, w should be able to take uh, our first call. Um, a little hard for me to see here, but um, uh, let's go to our first caller. Uh, yes, uh, Noel in Chicago. Noel, what do you have uh, on your mind today for InfoWars? Oh, Roger, always good hearing you on uh, AM 890 here in the Windy City. I wish they'd give you more time, but, you know, that's uh, that's corporate radio for you. But yes. always good hearing you in Chicago. Uh, glad to be there. Those are great guys. John and Ray, I love those guys. Absolutely. Yeah, I think you should uh, take Big John to a proper tailor in Chicago. His style is a bit lacking over the years. Uh, I must say... Uh, fascinating, Mr. Stone, that as the months have progressed, uh, I was uh, in front of Donna Brazil in Las Vegas at UNLV at the convention, the final convention before the election, in which she went on for well over an hour or so defending that a, the DNC did not burn Mr. Bernie. And number two, that the Russians are behind the whole WikiLeaks fiasco. It's fascinating that now that Ms. Brazil is leading the charge and saying, in fact, that the Clintons rigged the uh, Democratic uh, electionary process. Fascinating. It's uh, in your years and decades in the city of uh, the District of Columbia, Mr. Stone, have you ever seen such a purge on a faction of uh, a political group such as Clinton's as witnessing currently? And then secondly, can Mr. Trump, is it possible in, in his first, uh, first uh, term to truly drain the swamp in D.C.? I'm sure the political games he had to, you know, make concessions with Pence and Ryan and so forth, but can he truly drain the swamp in his uh, first term? Well, let me take those uh, in order, if I may. Uh, look, uh, Donna Brazil is a very bright woman, a highly capable woman, and I think she has figured out that the Democratic Party cannot survive, cannot have a revival 
as long as the Clintons hang around. They are completely discredited. They have blown their credibility with the American people. They're viewed as having no integrity, no philosophy, only interested in lining their own pockets. And then when Hillary attacks Donald Trump as a sexual harasser, as a sexual assaulter, well, it just doesn't ring true. As we know, it's Bill Clinton who has uh, raped and sexually assaulted multiple women. In my book, The Clinton's War on Women, I detail at least 24 women attacked by Bill Clinton. But more outrageously, it's Hillary Clinton who runs the cover-up, hires the heavy-handed private detectives and the nasty lawyers to silence his victims. We'll be right back, and I'll take the second part of your question. Welcome back. I'm Roger Stone, and you're on The Alex Jones Show. A little vintage Rolling Stones there, a little tune by Chuck Berry. Now, I want to come back to the second part of Noel's question, and that is about the large number of Bush alum in the Trump administration. An Associated Press reporter asked me about this only days ago. In all honesty, if President Trump fails in his mission to make America great again... If his administration fails to bring the extraordinary reforms that he's fighting for, it will be sadly because he has surrounded himself with quislings from the Bush era. I blame Reince Priebus, the former Republican national chairman, the former White House chief of staff, um, who was able to overpower my friend Steve Bannon and dominate the appointments around the president. Why, for example, you would appoint Mitch McConnell's wife, the longest serving member of the George W. Bush cabinet, as your secretary of transportation is beyond me. Why you would let Condoleezza Rice, the cheerleader for the Iraq war, the progenitor of the falsehood, the conspiracy theory, if you will, that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction, uh, dominating policy as our de facto Secretary of State. Her recommendation, uh, Rex Tillerson, filling the job until at least January, when I have predicted right here at InfoWars, we will have a Rexit, yes, He'll be gone by January 20th. So um, it is a problem, to say the least. Uh, and it is, uh, uh, I think, a pity that the president has not surrounded himself with people who are Trump supporters, people who actually voted for him, unlike so many members of the White House staff. Let's go back to the, uh, to the uh, board here. Mark in Oregon, uh, I'm, I'm anxious to hear your call. Mark, what's on your mind? Well, Roger, uh, great to speak with you, and uh, great to hear you sounding so vital and healthy. Feeling good. Good. Well, it's easy to tell. Uh, you're a very high-energy person. Roger, um, I keep the current events of significance of come so close together uh, very recently, uh, especially since Mr. Trump was uh, elected president of this country, that I just try to keep up with the most important things currently. I enjoy watching them be defeated, the dark side, but at the same time, they have some real strongholds. One of these strongholds right now, as far as where this country is going to go, and will Trump be successful, is to bring... All of these people to justice all at one time for the crimes on paper that they have committed with full documentation. And Jeff Sessions, who I now highly suspect, if I'm not convinced, that he's actually been a plant even through his Senate career and that he posed as a patriot enough to have people think that we, he was on our side. And there is no reason whatsoever that he can't initiate the uh, legal procedures which are necessary to bring these people from Clintons to Obamas to members of the Obama administration. All this would cause a reversal. It would give us the moral high ground. They would be shown for what they are. 
it would turn the whole tide of energy in this country. Well, Mark, thank you for your call. Let me address it, if I may. Um, I, I have been astounded by the actions of Attorney General Jeff Sessions. When we learned uh, shortly after the president's election that the NSA under Barack Obama systematically spied on 30,000 Americans in violation of both the law and the Constitution. This is not some conspiracy theory. This was a declaration by the super secret FISA court. In fact, the Obama NSA was warned not to do this, but they did so anyway. This is a crime far more egregious than Watergate. Yet, uh, under Jeff Sessions, there has been no prosecution of uh, of uh, Susan Rice, no prosecution of Mr. Clapper, uh, Mr. Brennan, Admiral Rogers, Valerie Jarrett, and those who were well aware of these illegal uh, surveillances. These were surveillances that amounted to political espionage. In other words, the use of the U.S. taxpayer-funded official uh, capacity of the American intelligence community for partisan political reasons. Where has Jeff Sessions been? Why has he brought no prosecution in this matter? Then, of course, he recuses himself in the matter of Russia. We know what the president thought of that from his Twitter feed. And now, incredibly... He accuses himself on the question of Uranium One. Now, in the question of Uranium One, there is a vital need for a special prosecutor. Even though we have no special prosecutor law under which the prosecutor would have to give regular reports to the attorney general, the special prosecutor would be required to, uh, to get approval before expanding their investigation beyond the narrow charge they are given, uh, we still need someone to look into the activities of, yes, Mr. Mueller, Mr. Comey, uh, Andrew McCabe, the associate director of the FBI, and then U.S. Attorney Rod Rosenstein. This gang of four were the people who covered up the Justice Department investigation into Russian bribery in connection with Uranium One. Now, when I came out and said uh, to the Daily Caller in a terrific piece by Alex Pfeiffer that the president should uh, demand the appointment of a special prosecutor, literally within an hour, Vanity Fair and uh, raw garbage or raw stuff or whatever this other lefty website are were out with uh, with a, a a counter a point saying that um, Stone is completely wrong. His legal theory is wrong. This is so much partisan sandbagging. It's a hypocritical argument uh, that says pursuing uranium one requires no special counsel. Given how trumped up the charges are against Paul Manafort, amounting little more to little more than a run-of-the-mill assistant U.S. Attorney General prosecution at best, one wonders whether I struck a nerve. Again, Mr. President, don't let your legal advisors mislead you. You have the authority to order the Attorney General to appoint a special prosecutor in the matter of Uranium One. But now with Jeff Sessions taking himself out of the line of fire, well, that would lead uh, to, uh, unfortunately, Mr. Rosenstein. Is this exactly the reason why Jeff Sessions has recused himself? For all we know, Rosenstein would ask James Comey to be the special prosecutor in this matter. Outrageous. Let's go back to the call board if we can. Uh, Rachel calling us from Australia. Rachel, what's on your mind? Oh, hi, Roger. How are you going? Excellent. Um, I'm just first of all, I just wanted to say lots of prayer and support for all of you guys in America in, your, in the dark times you're going through. But the question I wanted to ask was something I'm a Trump supporter. Um, I saw something earlier in the year that I've had in a question in the back of my mind about his meetings with Henry Kissinger. Um, my understanding is that he's quite a serious globalist. And I was just wondering 
what those meetings were about and if they were still meeting on an ongoing basis. Uh, Rachel, I'm going to address your question on the other side. You're on The Alex Jones Show. Stay tuned and we'll talk about Henry the K. That's right. I'm Roger Stone and we're back at The Alex Jones Show. I want to pick up our question from Rachel very quickly. I know a Dr. Kissinger. I have charted Dr. Kissinger's uh, uh, political ascension from where he started as a hardliner under Richard Nixon, became a progenitor for detente. I also know for a fact that Dr. Kissinger has been a key player in helping the president get the assistance of the communist Chinese uh, in the matter of North Korea. So I give Dr. Kissinger credit in that limited area, but he is a globalist. Above all, Henry Kissinger worships power, and Donald J. Trump is the man who has it. Uh, I want to say that if you were watching earlier, you saw me right here on screen take a handful of my favorite uh, InfoWars product, Brain Force. In fact, this very broadcast would not be possible without uh, about my without that dose of brain force, which I find brings me mental clarity, mental energy, really helps prepare for these broadcasts. Now, this is just one of the extraordinary sales going on at the Infowars.com store right now. 50% off. This is highway robbery, folks. Get this incredible product while you can. When they are out, it really hurts me. I have run out because I wasn't smart enough to get in the, uh, uh, in the um, auto charge program. And that proved to be a mistake. But you've got some extraordinary sales going on now. DNA Force back in stock. Uh, this is one of the very best products. Uh, this is a cutting edge. I strongly recommend it for uh, for vitality, uh, for boosting the immunity. But just one shipment of this incredible product costs us around $30,000. Alex Jones insists on the very best of these all natural products. Nothing gets on the site unless it is rigorously tested. And you can see that there are literally, in some cases, thousands of testimonials of satisfied customers. So when you go to the Infowars.com store, whether it's Brain Force or whether it's DNA Force or whether it's uh, uh, any of the other fine programs, Winter Sun, this is something my wife really subscribes to. Now, it is absolutely true with the winter sun and less sunshine, your body gets less Vitamin D, this can lead to lethargy, depression, and worse. This terrific product, now also 50% off. Help yourself, help us, help the resistance, help the fight against the globalists. Smack George Soros right in the nose by going now to the Infowars.com store and stocking up on these terrific products now at extraordinary savings, thanks to the price slashing by Alex Jones. Let's go back to the board uh, and take a few more of your calls. Glenn in Pennsylvania, we talked about Frank Rizzo's statue outrageously being removed from the uh, city of Philadelphia. But Glenn, what's on your mind today? Hello, Roger. Um, I wanted to say first that I, I appreciate the depth of historical insight and the knowledge of the personalities and the roles they've played that you bring to us. I always learn a great deal whenever I listen to you. So here ends up the kissing up. <laughs> and I did call about the Frank Rizzo issues. Um, but first I want to say tomorrow we, they do have scheduled a uh, refuse fascism.org uh, protest in Philadelphia at the Thomas Paine Center. And I'm considering now, running out this evening and having a Hillary Clinton for President 2020 shirt printed up and then wearing it down there tomorrow and circulating about the periphery and seeing what kind of responses I get. Well, be careful. They might call that a dirty trick. Just remember, one man's dirty trick is another man's civic participation. 
Uh, I'm delighted to see that uh, Mike Smirconish at CNN has put out a statement, a terrific piece, in which he says the right place for Frank Rizzo's statue is exactly where it is. Now, I am one who's been very critical of the folks at CNN, but on this subject, Mike Smirconish is absolutely right. Glenn, do you have a question? Well, about, well it's about the Frank Rizzo thing. Um, uh, if they move the statue, I would think one place they might consider for it would be in the South Philly area near the Italian market. I think the, sort of the, they talked about that with the Rocky statue and that sort of thing too, because that's the you know South Philly is historically the strongly Italian area of the city. Although the demography there is changing, but they could move it there, or as you said, perhaps they may not actually try to move it anywhere. Now I'm 56 years of age, so I vaguely remember the Rizzo dynasty. Um, and he, he and his brother was the uh, fire chief. Yes. And they were like a Philadelphia institution. He did suffer something of a, a police brutality scandal back in the day. That was, uh, I sort of remember that being on, uh, you know, in the media. Uh, but it was, a, it was a time of, uh, you know, still have a lot of protests going on, uh, sort of the, uh, you know, uh, a lot of civil rights stuff and things like that. So he did have to endure that. But again, you know, this is the foolishness of this iconoclastic approach to everything, you know, in world to the statues and historical things. I, you know, there, it, it's folly, I think, to, uh, to run around destroying everything in order to wipe the slate so the globalists can, uh, you know, rewrite uh, American history in a revisionist fashion and uh, blank the memories, make sure that the millennials and the people growing up don't actually get a, a, any sort of reasonable mental picture of what actually transpired so that they can implant whatever <clears throat> ideas they want. That's exactly right. It's, it's an attempt to erase our heritage. Speaking specifically, District Attorney Arlen Specter thoroughly investigated charges of police brutality under Police Commissioner Frank Rizzo, and no charges were ever brought against Rizzo. That was never official uh, department policy. But, Glenn, I thank you for your call. Let's go back to the call board. Uh, Gregory in Washington. What's on your mind, Gregory? We're here on the Alex Jones Show. Yeah, hi, uh, hi Roger. Um, I've been looking into the First Amendment and how it applies to the web since 1993, so I find your uh, recent case very interesting. And I just wanted to share an idea here with you. Using the later half of the First Amendment, I'm going to insert the word Twitter and read it. Sure. Twitter, Twitter is the freedom of the press, the people's peacefully to assemble, and the petition of the government for redress of grievances. As far as I'm concerned, Google, Facebook, all these people, they're nothing more than paper and ink sellers. And we really have to look at how to apply the First Amendment to them as if they're just selling the new form of paper and ink. Well, Gregory, thank you for your call. I would say this. It's time for Twitter, and Google for that matter, to be regulated like utilities. The telephone company is a privately owned company, but they cannot deny you a telephone. There are important First Amendment issues. Now, in my case, I believe that I'm being held to a different standard than others. You see uh, the whack job, uh, Keith Olbermann, a man who cannot hold down a day job, constantly dropping the F-bomb, attacking the president, uh, urging his assassination, but he's still on Twitter. You see ISIS uh, announcing that people are going to be beheaded, but they're still on Twitter. So uh, there is clearly a different standard for people like my friend Milo or myself. And we're going to let the courts sort this out. Yes, there's a big old lawsuit coming. And the pockets of those who are supporting this lawsuit are every bit as deep as Twitter. In fact, given the fact that Twitter is losing money from bad management, one presumes, I think our war chest may be bigger. Uh, thank you very much for your call. Um, uh, again, the uh, call um, uh, for your calls, if we can put that up for me again, um, I would ask you uh, if you want to get on board here, that number is 877-789-ALEX. That's 877, uh, a little, there we go, 877-789-ALEX. 
Uh, we are open to your calls. This is my favorite part of the Alex Jones show, the interaction um, with the Info Warriors. Uh, and I'm happy to take your calls on any question. Uh, we are moving up on the end of the show. So I ask you one more time, go to the Infowars.com store. Help us continue to be the tip of the spear. Help yourself. Help us. Help the revolution. Go to the store now, folks. There's some great, great discounts. Many thanks and victory or death.